Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Pete Man Reviews. Now this is the second part of our focus on Hot Rod. Um, now we've already looked at Hot Rod, Rodimus Major if you will, but Hot Rod. So I'll just pop him over there for the moment. Now we focus on Rodimus. Hot Rod, <laughs> again, the classics release. Now the classic release um, was around about 2010, so it's, again, that many years ago. It feels longer for some reason, but I guess there's been so many Transformers released since then, it's, it's kind of hard to try and keep track of them all. i say this was the very first one, very first new Transformer that I actually got. Um, having, and this, certainly the first from the classics line, I then went and got Starscream, um, but that was the f this was the first, and I have to say, for me, it certainly is the best. Certainly when I got Starscream, the classics, it was nothing like as good as this one. This one is by far the best classics one I've seen. And I know I've only got two classics, so that's perhaps a little bit of a... Um, yeah, did not say too much. But it's a good toy, and actually the detail that goes into it is... While it's not the same scale, personally I feel it's on the similar part as a masterpiece kind of, of toy. Because um, it does have some really good good features to it. But we start off with the car. Now the one thing that I've always noticed on this, and it feels a bit weird, is there's no Autobot insignia here. You look at the original and you've got the Autobot insignia directly below the engine. Here you don't, and that seems a bit odd to, to leave off. It is after all an official toy, so it's not a third party toy or anything, so that's a bit of a shame. Otherwise, everything about it is great. You know, you've still got the flames from Hot Rod, you've got the huge spoiler, even larger than before, which, again, it feels really Hot Rod to excess as well. Tyres are good, but they are plastic now rather than rubber, uh, but they do have some quite nice off-road detail to them. You've still got the exhaust. They're, li they're actually a little bit more toned down than the originals were, as you can see, but they streamline a lot more, a lot better. That said, you can see the brake quite clearly here you can't see the brake and well you can't easily see the brake here it's pretty obvious which is a bit of a bit of a shame but again we'll try and get so you can see inside it's got some excellent detail in the seats probably some of the best interiors i've seen particularly as you can't get at them really and do anything with them so you've got a steering wheel as you can just see there you've got some nice uh, innards as well, nice seats, seating arrangement, the console. I say, considering the fact you can't put anyone in there, you can't get at them, it's some very nice detailing. Um, now that was present on the original as well, but this takes it up to the next step. And the rear, um, it's got lights built into it. Again, I know they're, they're just different colour plastic, but it looks like lights. And the weapon becomes quite a nice flame as well, coming out of it. It's a really good, really good car. Um, considerably more streamlined than the original it's still meant to be a futuristic car but it doesn't feel like it's a futuristic retro car this has definitely got a feel of kind of the 1950s but meant to represent the future whereas this is a little bit more representative of the future i know technically we're living in the future <laughs> compared to what they thought of uh, for the movie set in you know, 2005 we're living way in the future of the movie even but we still don't have cars like this, and, and this looks really like you could. Though, without any wing mirrors, you probably would take the end of the spoilers quite a lot. Okay, so we'll come to the transformation now. Obviously, you start off by taking out the weapon. You don't need that for the moment. This is a, a spring-loaded weapon, uh, so it does fire, and we'll come to that when he's in robot mode. So, as common with most cars, you've got the head at the front, feet at the back. I'm just going to start... Actually, we're trying to think where the best place to start this. There's, there's many different options. Probably the best one is to move these rear wheels out. So, so you've got two little orange tabs here. They do just literally slide out like that. Sometimes they're a little bit stiff. They don't slide out a lot, but they slide out just enough for you to be able to then flip these parts around like so. And again on this side, like so. Once you've done that, you then just want to just pop this slide here because this then releases this which will go around the spoiler the spoiler will then rotate like so we'll just pop that there so it's out of the way so we're now going to concentrate down on the feet here so you've got your feet which are attached in here this whole bit will flip out like that and then within it you've got 
the rear stabiliser part of the foot. It's a common design that you see nowadays in both third and party transformers and in, in masterpiece style transformers. I think this might have been the first time, certainly the first time I've ever seen it. It's not to say it's the first time it's been used, but it's the first time I've seen it. Now, you've then got to ensure that you don't want this leg like that, you want the leg in a nice long bit, so it does kind of, there's a little bit of manoeuvring around here so that you can just rotate this down. These side bits here, they do come out just a bit like that, so it's it's almost like it's it's leg armour, again, you know, if, if, if you were a samurai kind of style. Which I don't hot rod it, but it kind of works anyway. Okay, so now we can move to the top part. So this size here, you just pull apart like that. This will whole front will go and flip down like that to reveal the head. Before we do the arms, I'm just going to rotate this whole section. Much like the original, it has to be said, so you've now got the huge spoiler at the top. And then these go down to form the arms. And see, so they just break apart there, so you've got a, a, an elbow. Now the hands do then just flip out like so, and on this side as well. He does have an additional item in here. There we are. Okay, and so we now have Hot Rod in his robot mode. Um, Weapon-wise, so you've got the f uh, the firing trigger here. If you fire it, I'm just going to put the hand there. It's quite this. I say quite powerful. It's reasonably strong for a, a toy in that it will fire. Considering this is quite a large missile as well, it does quite well, and he will hold that, and it now becomes kind of a flame. <coughs> sorry, kind of like a flame gun as well. As for this little part. I think it's meant to be a communicator, is the idea. However, with the with the circular like that, it looks very reminiscent of the cutting saw that he uses in Transformers the movie. So I've always used it as a cutting saw, and you, know, you then flip the hand up back like that, and you now have the the cutting saw. So it's probably meant to be a communicator, but hey, it's more fun to say that it's not. Detailing wise. The head is very good detail. Uh, it does have manoeuvrability like that. You can see the eyes do glow when you hold it up to a light source. Good detailing on the chest there. He is quite quite a lot to him in the back. You see you've got the whole front bit here and it goes all the way back there. So it's quite a lot to go around. But otherwise you've got great poseability. You know, full manoeuvrability of the legs. Full manoeuvrability of the knees. Uh, same here. Obviously the hands don't manoeuvre. They are just a fist. But it's, I say, this is the first one that I'd had which had this kind of manoeuvrability. And it really, really works, doesn't it? It just looks great. We, we compare him to, to a classic G1 Transformer cup. Very similar size, which is quite, which works well, doesn't it? So if I just pop him back a little bit, then we might get a little bit, a bit better light. To zoom in a bit there. It's very similar size, height-wise. Obviously, Cup's head is is vastly out of scale compared with Hot Rod's. All this Hot Rod's head, small. Um, I suspect Cup's head is probably a bit too large. But they scale really well, and I say this guy is really, really poseable. Um, I'm just going to grab over the original Hot Rod, um, or rather the commemorative release Hot Rod, and have a look at how he compares. Okay, so here is his original. Now we've already discussed a lot about the original and how it works and the style and everything. I'm not going to go through all that again because I think I was waffling before and <coughs> you don't want me waffling any more than I already am. Um, in terms of height, obviously this guy is bigger. In terms of scale, well, I still, I still kind of think his head appears a little bit small. Or does it appear large? I'm, I'm undecided. I guess I guess you would have to say that Classics Hot Rod perhaps does have a little bit of a small head. It's a fault I've levelled at many other Transformers, notably the G1 version of Astro Trade, um, and perhaps the Seacons, but it still appears quite small. It's very detailed, don't get me wrong, but it could be a little bit larger. The Classics one is a great toy. Um, I would have to say it is a masterpiece level. It's not a masterpiece toy, obviously. It's not so cheaper. <laughs> the masterpiece toy is bigger and has a lot more 
Well, I say a lot more. It does have more detail and more things to it, but the classics toy works really, really well. You compare him with the original toy. You know, the original toy comes off pretty well, doesn't he? he I do like the shininess. I do like the effect. But I think I prefer the classics toy more. more. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave any comments below. Click and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next review. Thank you. Goodbye.